Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA a certification training course on diagnosing and troubleshooting laptops. This is from our a exam 220-701. That's our essentials exam, section 2.4, where we need to explain and interpret common laptop issues and determine the appropriate basic troubleshooting method. We're going to go through power conditions, video, keyboard, pointer, stylus, wireless card, all of those things that surround troubleshooting those nagging problems that are specific to a laptop environment. Let's start with power issues. You start up a laptop computer and you're having issues. You may want to check that power. The power in a laptop a little bit different than the power that's inside of a desktop computer. That power inverter that takes and provides you with DC power is actually external to the laptop. So we want to be sure that we are getting AC power from the power supply on the wall. We're plugging in on the wall on one side of our power adapter here. We want to make sure that the cables going into that adapter are snug, because these days you can take all of the cables apart and put that into a bag for storage. Because you, you're running a laptop, you're going to be going from place to place. So make sure everything is snug there. Make sure that if there are lights on this power supply brick, we call it, because it looks like a little brick. There may be lights on there that light up whenever it's getting power. Make sure that it's receiving power from the wall. You don't want to be plugging into a connection that isn't actually providing you with any power. Also on the other side, it's putting out DC. And this DC connection on the other side is what you're plugging into your laptop. You might want to be able to check the output with a multimeter. Usually it's very easy to take that connection and see if the power supply brick here, this power inverter is actually doing that for us. It's actually taking the AC power and outputting DC. You'll not only be able to see if you are getting power with your multimeter, you'll be able to tell exactly how much. And you can compare that with the specifications of your laptop to make sure that it's working the way you would expect. If you have another power supply sitting around, you may want to check that one as well. See if you're getting the same thing from that. Be able to swap those out. You can tell pretty quickly if there's problems associated with that piece. The power adapters themselves, so these adapters are usually set up to automatically switch depending on the type of power input that you're putting into it. And usually you can take that one adapter and go from country to country, and it fits almost everywhere in the world. That's not always the case. There are some of these power adapters, especially third-party adapters, where you have to manually set exactly the input and the output that's going to go in there. The input voltage usually on these is anywhere from the 110 volt or 220 volt, depending on where you are in the world. If we zoom up on our power supply, we can really look at the detailed specifications for this. So for input, I know that I'm expecting either 100 or 240 volts of AC power. There's our AC power symbol right there. We can also see that it's expecting 50 hertz or 60 hertz cycles of that power, depending on whether we're running at that 100 or 240 volts. And you can see that we're expecting to get at least 2 amps to be able to get this to work. So there's a good place you can go to plug in your multimeter, see if that is the power that you're getting from your power source, see if it matches what's on here, and you'll know at least your input is good to be able to use. On the other side of this power supply, it's going to output 19 and a half volts of DC power, that's our DC power symbol, at 4.62 amps. So you'll notice also the inside connection on this power supply is the positive side, and the outside connection is the negative side. Well, that's a great place we can go. Now connect to our multimeter to the inside and outside connectors to this and determine, are we getting 19 and a half volts at 4.62 amps? And if we are, we're probably in good shape on the output as well. Notice that the maximum output power, especially for this particular laptop using this particular power supply, this is going to give us 90 watts of power. So if our laptop is one that needs more than 90 watts, this power supply isn't going to work for us. And you'll notice if it's matched up with that power supply, if we need to replace this particular adapter, make sure you replace it with one that's going to provide you with at least 90 watts of power. When we use laptops, we really rely on our batteries to give us the advantage of disconnecting from a power source and taking this portable system anywhere we'd like it to go. When you run into different battery types and different laptops, you'll notice there are a few that you're always going to see. On very, very old systems, you may run into NICAD batteries, nickel cadmium. We don't really use those much any longer. They, what's really nice about the NICADs is you could really completely discharge those and charge them right back up, and they bounce right back again. The problem is that that technology was relatively expensive compared to some of the newer battery technologies, so you don't really see those used much any longer. Some of the newer modern 
types of batteries are things like nickel metal hydride and IMH. Uh, these can be over discharged. So you want to be careful that you don't completely lose a charge on these kinds of batteries. And they have a relatively high self-discharge rate, which means you'll charge it up, set it to the side, and as soon as you disconnect it from power, it slowly begins losing its charge. So you can't put this on a shelf and leave it there for a month. When you come back, it's not going to have the charge it did a month ago. We, the types of batteries you see most recently are things like these, where they are the lithium ion batteries. You'll notice these are the lithium ion batteries up here. This is a picture of lithium ion that I have here, two different kinds of batteries. The service life of these is limited as well. You can only charge them up and discharge them only so many times. The charge capacity does decrease over time. So as soon as they are made and manufactured, they've got a, an amount of time that they'll be able to use. They start aging almost immediately, whether you are using them or not. They also don't handle deep discharge as well. If you discharge these all the way out, it's very difficult for those to get back to a full charge again. So you try to keep these charged as much as possible. Don't let them sit around with a complete discharge, or else you're not going to be able to get the life out of them you'd like. You're going to run to any one of these over time, these different types of batteries. Just look at the battery type. It will tell you right on the battery what type of battery technology it uses. And it'll give you some updates. Check the manual. It will give you some ideas about how to use these batteries, how to charge them properly, and the best way to go about making sure they last as long as possible with your laptop.